Hey there, it's Ash from Elementor. In this tutorial, we will explore the Image Carousel widget. This widget allows you to display a selection of images in a fun and interactive way. So if you're ready, let's get started. Today we'll create three variations of the Carousel widget. The first will display a single image which fades gracefully into another image every couple of seconds. The second will display a simple collection of photographs in a two-column format, which, when clicked, will open up the lightbox pop-up of the image. The third and final example will be an automatic scrolling logo carousel. To get started, let's delete our first carousel and let's add a new blank one. Simply search for the image carousel widget and drop it into position. The Image Carousel widget has several configuration and styling options and we'll go over these in our free examples. The first thing we must do is add some images to our carousel. To do this, simply select the plus icon to launch your media library. Here you can either upload new images for your carousel or select ones that you've previously uploaded. We already have our images uploaded, so we'll simply select the images and create a new gallery. The next screen allows us to change the order of our images and also amend the image title, caption and description. Once you're happy with these elements, simply select Insert Gallery to add the image carousel to your page. Now that we have our images inserted into our carousel widget, it's time to amend the configuration and styling. The first option we see is the image size. This allows us to specify which version of the image is used in the carousel. By default, it uses the thumbnail, which is far too small, so we'll switch this to large. Now we can declare how many slides we would like to show at one time. By default, the carousel will show three images, but we would like it to only show one. Image stretch will leave us no because our image already fills all of the available space. By default, the navigation is set to display both arrows and dots. We can also set this to display just arrows or just dots. In our example, we do not need the navigation to show, so we'll set this as none. Next, we have the link options. We can link our carousel to a media file or a custom URL. We'll cover this aspect in our next carousel, so for now, let's set this to none. The final option here is for the caption. If you've added this data within the media library, you can display it underneath your images. The options available are title, caption, and description. If you have this option selected and switch over to the style tab, you will notice that we can amend the styling for the caption section. These styles are applied to the title, caption, and description, regardless of which one you have selected. We can first of all amend the alignment of the text. Next, we can choose the text color, either by selecting a global color option or a manual selection. And finally, we can configure the typography. Again, either by selecting the global options or manually. We do not require this for our design, so let's switch back and we'll leave this as none. Next up, let's switch to the additional options area. We would like our carousel to rotate and change slides automatically, so we'll set this option as yes. Pause on hover is a great feature which pauses the autoplay when a user hovers over the carousel. We'll leave this as yes. And we can set whether we would like the carousel to pause if a user interacts with it. Again, we'll set this as yes. The autoplay speed option allows us to control the time it takes for the next slide to start. By default, it is set to 5000, which converts into 5 seconds. We'd like our carousel to change slightly faster, so let's change this to 2000, which converts into 2 seconds. Infinite loop will set to yes, as we would like the carousel to continuously play rather than stop when it gets to the last image. Effect allows us to specify whether we would like the images to fade or slide into one another. This design would suit a fade, so let's set that here. 
and the animation speed works in the same way as the autoplay speed. Here we can amend the number to equal the amount of seconds we would like the animation to last for. In our example, one and a half seconds works well, so we'll set this to 1500. The final option we see is the direction. If we amend our carousel to the slide effect, you can see that we can now control the way that the slides move. Let's switch back to fade and we'll leave this as default. Okay, great stuff. The image carousel is really starting to take shape. Switch over to the Style tab. Because of our current configuration in the Style tab, we only see one option, which is to set a border for the carousel. Here we can set a border type, width, and color to show around the image. There is also an option to add a border radius if required. We'll leave the border switched off and the radius as default as our design doesn't require either of these styles. The last step to finish our image carousel is to add a drop shadow effect so that it fits with the design of our page. Switch over to the advanced tab and navigate your way to the border section. Under box shadow, we'll set the color to hash 004C4C, but be sure to set whichever color matches your design. Horizontal will set to 100, which will move the box shadow effect across 100 pixels. Vertical will set to minus 100, which will move the shadow effect up 100 pixels. Let's set blur to zero so that we have nice clean edges. And spread can be left as zero and the position can be left as outline. Okay, great. As you can see, our simple image carousel really brings a nice level of design to our website. Let's move on to the next carousel. As you can see in our next carousel, we have two columns, navigation arrows, and a slide effect. Let's delete this widget and create a new one from scratch. Just like before, let's search for the image carousel widget and drop it into position. First, we'll add the images to our carousel from the media library. Once this is done, we can start configuring our carousel to create the correct layout. We'll set image size to large, slides to show to 2, slides to scroll to 1, image stretch can be left as no, and in the navigation section we'll set this to arrows and dots. Even though our design doesn't use the dot navigation, we'll enable this for now so that when it comes to styling this element, you will have a much better understanding of how it works. Under link, we have three options. By default, this is set to none, which means nothing will happen if a user clicks onto an image. We also have media file and custom URL. Selecting custom URL opens a new field where you can specify a URL for your carousel to link to. For our demo, we're going to link to a media file using Lightbox. When we select media file, a new field appears called Lightbox and we'll set this to yes. As you can see, now that when we click the image, it opens the Lightbox pop-up, which adds a great level of interactivity to our design. Finally, we'll leave the caption set as none. Now select additional options. The default settings here work really well for our carousel, so we'll leave them as they are, but feel free to amend these to suit your requirements. Next, we'll style the navigation elements to finish the carousel. Switch over to the Style tab, and you'll see styling options for both the arrows and dots. Under the Arrows section, we can configure several elements to fine-tune the arrows. Position allows us to set the arrows to show on the inside or outside of the carousel. We'll set this to Outside. Size controls the size of the arrows. For our design, 30 works well. And finally, we'll set the color to hash 004C4C. The dot section is similar to the arrows in that we are able to control the position, size, and color of this navigation element. For our design, the dots are not required, so we'll switch back to the content tab and set the navigation to arrows only. Switch back to style, and then finally we'll select the image tab. 
Vertical align can be left as default. Spacing will change to custom and we'll set the value of this to 20. Under border type, we'll leave this as none. The final thing we must check here is that our carousel appears correctly on tablet and mobile devices. Let's switch to the tablet view. By default, the carousel is configured to show two columns on tablet, which is perfect for our design. If, however, you needed to change this to say three columns, we can now amend the slides to show like so. We can also do the same for mobile devices. On mobile, the default slide is set to show as one, which again works great for our design, but if you need to amend this, you can do so here. And there we have it, we've created a great looking two column carousel with lightbox pop-ups enabled. Now let's create our third and final carousel. Scroll down to the logo carousel, And let's delete this widget. Search for the image carousel widget and drop it into position. Now add in your images. And we'll set the image size to medium large. Slides to show here will be five and slides to scroll will be one. Image stretch can be left as no, and navigation, link, and caption can all be left as none. Under additional options, we'll set autoplay to yes, pause on hover to yes, pause on interaction to yes, autoplay speed to 2500, infinite loop to yes, animation speed to 500, and direction to left. Let's finish the logo carousel by switching to the style tab. Here we can amend the alignment and spacing of our logos. Vertical align should be set to center and under spacing, change this to custom and set the value as 70. The logo carousel is now complete and adds a great level of interaction to our design. And there we have it, you now have a much better understanding of how to use the image carousel widget and how to implement it into your designs. Thanks for watching. Please comment below with any questions you may have and don't forget to like and subscribe.